In this screencast, I'm going to talk about some of the basic techniques for interrogating data, for getting answers out of it. And I'm going to um, focus initially on some loans data from the European Investment Bank, uh, which I mentioned in the previous screencast. If you haven't watched the other screencast about preparing the data for analysis, then please do so first. What we've done with this data is clean it up in some very basic ways by getting rid of extra rows before the heading row and also deleting a grand total row at the end, which um, can confuse things. Now, this data has a number of qualities to it. It's a good idea when you start with some data to look at the columns and get a feel for what sort of information you have. Quite often, there will be two broad types of data, text data and numerical data, but there are also um, different types of text and different types of numbers. For example, this first column gives us the name of the organisation that's receiving money from the European Investment Bank. Um, now, there's going to be a limited list here. These are company names and you can see that some of them will appear more than once. That's important because we also have another text field here, column G, which is a description. And this is what's called free text. It's quite unlikely that we're going to get exactly the same text, although we do have a similar phrase used here twice. But because these are not individual organisations, these are descriptions, um, these are more likely to be inconsistent and open. And, and they're not going to be open to grouping in some way. So we've got descriptions, we've got names, um, we've got some other text fields here, region and country. Again, there's going to be a limited number of possibilities here. Sector comes from a, a very limited list of about half a dozen possibilities. And then we have two numerical fields, signature date and signed amount. Signed amount is a pretty straightforward numerical value. This is euros and we have a number of euros that has been loaned to each particular company. The signature date may not look like a number, but it actually is. It's actually stored by Excel as the number of minutes since uh, 1900. And uh, this allows it to do calculations with dates. So although this looks like a series of characters, it's actually a number that represents that date. And you can do calculations and extract individual years or months or dates in different ways. I'm not going to cover that here, however. When you look at data, it's a good idea to try and identify the who and the what that your story is likely to be about. In this case, there are a number of who's that our story could be about. We could tell stories about the companies that are getting the most money. We could tell stories about the regions that are getting the most and the least money. We could tell stories about the countries or the sectors that are getting different amounts of money. You'll notice each of those has the same what, and the what in this case is the money. And often that is the what of your story. If you have any kind of numerical data in your story, the amount of money, the number of people affected, the amount of crimes, then that is likely to be the what of your story. So our what is going to be the money, but the who could be any number of these first four columns. To find out uh, about the amount of money given to a region or to a sector or to a company, a very useful technique is what's called pivot tables. Now, different types of um, versions of Excel will have pivot tables in a different area. In um, this version, it's under data but um, you might have it under uh, layout or insert, depending on your type of um, version of Excel. So look under data or insert. I haven't got an insert menu here, but it would be around here. And if you click on insert, the pivot table is normally on the left, right over here. In my case, it's under data and it's here, pivot table. You need to make sure you are somewhere in your data. Uh, don't select a column or a row, so don't do this, don't do that or that, because it will think that's the only data you want to look at. 
So I'll just click on a single cell like this and then click on pivot table and you will get something like this. In some cases you will get a, a, a question, a, a window that asks you if it's got the right data and so on. Just click OK until you get to a point that looks something like this. And what we have is a pivot table builder on the right which I'll explain in a minute and then the actual pivot table itself on the page. Now again depending on your version of Excel sometimes this will be empty, in fact most of the time this will be empty and I'm going to untick all of these boxes over here so that we have an empty pivot table. So if you do, if it does automatically fill your pivot table Go through this list of boxes in the pivot table builder over here and untick all of these boxes so that you have an empty pivot table over here. One other note, if this pivot table disappears, this pivot table builder, it's probably because you've clicked here outside of the actual pivot table itself. So if you can't see a pivot table builder window on the right of your screen, make sure you click here in your pivot table itself. Now I should make a distinction between what I mean by a pivot table and what I mean by the pivot table builder. The pivot table here gives you an overview of your data. The pivot table builder on the right is how you build that overview and that's what we're going to do now. So all your work is done in this black window or sometimes a grey window on the right, but the results of it will appear on the spreadsheet itself. I said that you needed to identify the who and the what of your story. The who of your story will always go in the row labels area here and the what will go in the values area here. I'll show you what I mean. If we're interested in what sector got the most money, we can click sector on this list up here and drag it down to the row labels here. And now you can see in your actual pivot table a list of all of those sectors. So that's the who of our story and we want to know who has got how much money. So the money is going to go in our values. Now in that case it's the signed amount and again it's the same process click and drag it down to values. So here we can see how much money each of these sectors got in the data that we're looking at. At the moment it's organized by the name of the sector. So agriculture comes first because it begins with A and water, sewerage, solid waste comes last because it begins with W. It's an alphabetical order. To find out who got most, in other words to order it by the amount received, we need to click in this B column, the amount column, and sort our data. So go to your data menu and there should be a sort option that looks like this, A to Z. In this case we actually want Z to A. So change it to descending and as long as you are in the column you want to sort, it will resort the whole data based on that column from largest to smallest. So we can see that credit lines was the biggest sector and agriculture was actually the smallest. These numbers are just general numbers, they're not easy to look at. So the final thing you might want to do is just change the appearance of those numbers so that they look like money. And to do that select your cells, so click and drag over the cells and then hold down control and one or right click and go to format cells, you can see here control and one, command and one on the Mac. If you click on format cells then you can change it from a general number to currency and we can see for example that top value is actually, well it's an enormous amount, it's um, probably about 87 billion from the looks of that. We can get rid of the decimal places as well to simplify things. We're not interested in pennies. We also need to remember this isn't pounds, but it's euros. So we can do that. And click OK. So now 
we can see much more clearly it's 87 billion, 81 billion and so on. So that's how to get an overview of the data. Now you can very quickly say that Credit Lines was the biggest recipient of loans during the period that the data covers. What I'll do in the next uh, screencast is look at how you might analyse aggregate data like the staffing information that we viewed previously because you can't use pivot tables really on aggregate data.